Ciao a tutti. Hi everyone. Buongiorno. <laughs> buongiorno. <laughs> exactly. David loves saying buongiorno. Um, now we're doing something a little bit different today. As you can see, we're not in Kiani. We are actually in my mum's home in Sydney. We're staying here with her at the moment. And it's a long story, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But we just thought it was the perfect opportunity mm -hmm. to actually do something together, which um, apart from we do a lot, a lot of things together, of course, as you've seen in Kiani, but when we're in Sydney, often it's busy, busy running around and with the holidays at the moment. And to be honest with you, I have a bad back at the moment. So it's really quiet mm. here, taking yes. it easy. And we just thought what a perfect opportunity to do a question and answer time with you all or for you all, because we've been getting asked a lot of questions. So we thought, mm -hmm. let's just sit down and walk through them. I have my laptop in front of me. I'm going to be mm. popping on my glasses and reading through these questions that you have sent because there's quite a few. So, um, oh, before I hit the questions, just one thing I really mm. did want to say today was... We're matchy-matchy. We are matchy-matchy. Oh, well, I'm lilac and he's pink. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not what I was going to say. Just, just for the colour blind uh, audience. <laughs> <For> the... <laughs> He's so thoughtful. <laughs> um, no, what I was going to say was we both just wanted to wish you all a really, really happy 2023. Mm, yes. And thank you all so much. We, I said to David, oh, I say to him over and over again, we are just meeting virtually, obviously, but we are meeting some of the loveliest human beings, honestly, that yeah, you would ever amazing, come across. Quite amazing, really. Yeah, isn't it? We, it's we didn't think we just thought, ah, oh, we'll we'll tell our story, but it's been wonderful to meet the people and and hear your comments, and uh, yeah, we're very grateful for you watching and uh, following the journey. Exactly what he just said. Honestly, mm. we are pretty blown away. And I, every day I say to him, oh, David, read this beautiful comment that this person has sent through to us. Um, mm. People are so kind, so encouraging. And, you know, we're not one of these big Chateau in France shows or anything, which I have, as many of you know, I've done up two major properties in France in my past. Not Chateau. Mm. But um, this is just a small family home um, that we'll, we'll be sharing with others. But, you know, it's not a massive project, but it's massive for us. Yep. Um, it's a really major thing for us. And it's been a major mm. step, as many of you know, doing this from the other side of the world. And the support yeah. and encouragement and love and kindness that we get from all of you is extraordinary. And we just want to thank you all so much for that. Yeah. Very, very thank grateful. You. Thank you. <laughs> so this is a little way of thanking you, I suppose, as well, as I'm mm. trying to get back to you with all your answers. So let me pop on my glasses. And yeah. we're going to start today with our lovely friend Celia, who's been um, chatting with us quite a lot on the channel. And Celia, um, first question, I think, David, I'm going to let you take this first one, I think. Oof. So Celia asked, are we moving to Italy full time or part time? So there you go. How do you answer that question? Um, you would think it would be uh, either full time or part time, but I think it's more of a transition because um, we've got commitments, family commitments and work commitments in Australia at the moment. Um, so we and I guess our thought process is on a, on a journey and a sort of fairly longer term is, is to transition to retirement um, because of our young age, of course. <laughs> And, <laughs> and and um, through that journey, we will obviously be visiting a lot uh, to Kiani uh, and um, hopefully, uh, you know, renting it out and um, doing things like that. So it's, it's sort of a part time initially uh, and then moving towards uh, more of a full time as we sort of get to that retirement. And may I just add, David, that if we were to win mm. the Powerball tomorrow or one of those big lottos, it might happen a lot sooner. <laughs> because then we would not worry yes. about waiting until official retirement, I'm sure. Exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. um, but at this point in time, um, yeah, for all of those reasons, mm -hmm. absolutely. So Celia, I hope that's answered that question for you. Right, so jumping on to question number two, and I've popped my glasses on to read this. This is from the lovely Sonia. Mm. 
Uh, Sun, you asked a really valid question about transport and we know how many people would be interested in this as well because I know we were. Um, we don't own a car yet, so of course mm -hmm. um, we were concerned about getting to and from if we weren't renting a car. So transport to Kiani, yes, there are buses to Kiani. Now, I really loved that this was available. And mm. in fact, I was a little bit surprised being a small village that in fact the bus service runs every day and pretty much once on the hour kind of thing. So um, Kiani has mm. a bus route and it runs to and from a large town called Pontadera. Now Pontadera is north of us and it's not that far off from Pisa. Um, so Pontadera is a really large town that we went to once yep. to do some um, major sort of stuff with Vodafone and things like that because it's a big centre. And the bus route runs via Casciana Terme, which is a lovely town, mm -hmm. slightly larger than uh, Chiani. Chiani yeah. And it's a spa town. It has a really, really beautiful big spa. And it also runs via a place called Ponsacco. Now, Ponsacco, again, is another kind of larger town, not as big as Pontadera, mm. but again, in Ponsacco, you actually have a major train station. So this is where it's really yep. great. You don't have to go all the way to Pontadera. You jump off at Ponsacco, and from there, you've got a major train station which runs on the line between Pisa and Florence. Mm. Yep. So you can either jump and head off to the west, so to speak, to Pisa, or head east to Florence, Florence. on mm. that line. So from Chiani, basically a bus and a train, and you can be in Pisa, you can be in Florence, and then from there, of course, jump in high-speed trains to Milan, mm. Rome, whatever. So yeah. yes, we do have transport. Um, and I looked, and the tickets on the bus line and the local trains are very, mm. very reasonably priced as yeah, well, yeah. which is yeah. excellent. So that was a really great thing to, to know. And I learned that um, because we wanted to know, but also I looked into it even further for Sonia's sake. And I'm really happy because mm. I said to David, oh, this is great stuff to know for us. Yeah. Okay. We're finding out things from these questions because then we investigate. <laughs> we are. We're learning as we go along. So another part of Sonia's question was, mm. where do we go grocery shopping? <clears throat> Again, an excellent question, mm. Sonia. Yeah. <laughs> Look, in all honesty, we basically shop in Kiani, and this was um, mm. this is both. Um, there's a few reasons behind this. Number one reason is that we're lucky enough that we can, uh, because Kiani is really well serviced. But also because, um, if I can say that, um, we really, really want to support the local shops, and I think this is something really mm. important to remember <coughs> when you're heading into a new village. And it goes, this answer sort of goes with another question that was asked later on as well about making friends easily. Um, when you hit a new village, one of the first things that David saw me do, and of course, luckily I do speak Italian, but in Chiani, for example, most shopkeepers do speak basic English. I've heard them speak to people. They're wonderful. Yeah. They're very embracing and warm and welcoming. Um, but the first thing basically I did was go in and say, Hi, ciao, you know, mm. I'm Marisa and David. Um, do you know, we just bought a house here and um, we'll be moving here eventually, but, you know, be here as much as we possibly can. And straight away that kicks off the conversation. Oh, really? Yeah. Where did you come from? All that kind of thing. So yeah. that then, builds up then, the relationship. And then you're people. telling them that you're, you're on almost coming becoming a local you you're know. a local it, they literally adopt uh, yeah. adopted us immediately pretty yeah, much yeah, yeah. so to you answer might be on an, an apprenticeship label, you know. <laughs> apprenticeship <laughs> yes until they worked you out perhaps but um i think you passed the apprenticeship pretty quickly actually david yes did all right. did all right. <laughs> so basically to come back to your question so we shop mostly in kiani now a lot of people often think that little towns can be expensive or little villages can be expensive in all honesty You'll get a much larger range, obviously, if you go to a village yep. with a large supermarket, if you mm. want a much larger range of food. But that kind of comes down then to personal choice because in Kiani, we have mm. excellent shops and excellent little super mini, mini marts, if you like, yep. a fruit market, lots of different things. And I'm going to go mm. through every single shop we have in one of the next questions to let you know. But we shop locally mostly, and what we did is when we were still there, we would go once in a blue moon kind of thing. We'd jump in the car because mm. we might be going to see some antiques or do something. And if we were in a town where one of the large supermarkets was there, we'd go in for a stroll around, see what they had on special, 
maybe pick up yeah. a different bottle of wine that you wouldn't get in Kiani and get a few <clears throat> bits and bobs, so to speak, that we might not get in Kiani. You might but... do a big shop for your non-perishables or something yes, like that. Yes, you might pick up like a massive mm. thing of toilet rolls <laughs> or, a, mm, yeah. or a massive thing of water or, mm. you know, because you've got your car with you or, um, you know, as I said, maybe some mm. different wines or things like that. But honestly, for everyday foods, we love going to our local shops and supporting our local yeah. shopkeepers because we don't want these shops to go. We don't mm. want the village to die, which it's not. Um, we're one of the lucky ones, but that can happen. I've seen it happen. I've lived in other villages in Europe and if people don't support the local shopkeepers, then that's yeah. when they close down. Yeah. So that's the answer to that first part, um, Sonia and everybody else. Yeah. Um, but let me see what else I said, aha, uh -huh. yeah. right. So for your information, so pretty much we have lots of villages close to us, but pretty much the largest local kind of township village, if you like, for major shopping is called La Rosa. Now it's only about seven kilometers away, I mm. think, something like that. It's five minutes in the car, yeah. It's not very far at all, mm. probably more than five, David, but, but it's a really, really quick drive mm. away anyway. Now, La Rosa um, is not one of these cute little villages or anything. It's more like a commercial kind of village and it's in a flat area in a valley. But boy, oh boy, it has everything <clears throat> you could possibly need. Mm. We didn't know the first time we went there that it was going to have as much as what it did. We actually got sent there to look at a used furniture market and you probably saw that one in one of our very first vi yeah. videos we put out when we first got to Kiani. Um, we bought some things there. We bought our first big green, the bloody green glass damajanas, the bottles there. And when we got there, we thought, oh, there seemed to be a lot of outlets. So La Rosa has a lot of amazing outlet stores. Mm. So they have incredible things, everything you'd need in a really, really close proximity to Kiani. So when we're not needing, or we're not wanting to shop in Kiani for something, or we need yeah. something more specific, we can head to La Rosa, so a really quick drive away. Mm. So I hope that answers that question there for now. Okay, so another question still from Sonia. How do you mm. get your utilities set up when purchasing? David. Well, yes, okay. So when you're purchasing a property, obviously normally through a real estate agent. So the real estate agents are really helpful. So these, these are the people that you really want to sort of... Um, become friendly with through the uh, sort of purchasing process because they'll help you do all the transitions and help you with any paperwork and everything like that but basically they'll assist you with the uh, I guess the trans transmission of uh, ownership from the old owner to yourself in relation to the utilities um, and also the, the property itself so uh, really, most of it's done f with your real estate agent, and they help you through that process. So yeah, it can there can be hiccups because <laughs> as we've learnt, <laughs> we've, we've bumped into a couple of hiccups. But you know, you you don't worry about it. You know, it's yeah. it, eventually it all gets sorted out. So yeah, yeah, just I mean, one little thing I would add to that is that mm. um, we have had an issue with a change of names over several months, mm. um, and everyone has assured us that not to worry about it, it's still in the process. Some things, some particular yeah. things in Italy take a long time. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a nuisance, but honestly, we're not losing sleep over it at all. Mm. So things normally go pretty smoothly from what we've understood yeah. from most people. Uh, and oh, one thing to uh, remember is that in Italy with the electricity, uh, they have, um, I guess, gradings of the number of, um, what is it? Kilowatts. Kilowatts, yes. So the number of kilowatts that uh, your house is set up for. So the normal house, I think, is three kilowatts. Correct. That's the normal um, setup for a sort of three or four bedroom house or something like that. Um, but you can get lower ones. And then, you know, if you get a lower one, you might hit the issue where if you've got too many devices going, the, the power will just turn off. And then you have to turn off some devices and switch it back on. Um, it's like a fuse that triggers when you hit that um, sort of level of uh, usage. So that's something important to understand. Again, which we didn't know. No, we didn't know that. Yeah. So we, we so were we unsure. It kept 
triggering them again. <laughs> our kettle, it our must... brand new, everything was fine yeah. except our brand new Smeg kettle. Kettles evidently um, yeah. use a really lot, a lot of power yeah. surge immediately, like fast modern kettles. Yeah. And every time we put in our Smeg kettle with more than just say a little tiny bit of water in it, it would just turn the house off. And we thought, what's going on? And we found out, in fact, um, when we went through the process of changing over with the contract, that we were actually on our house. Perhaps the last owners had done that because there was no one there. They'd put the house right down to 1.5 kilowatts, which is not enough <coughs> for a household to run on. Yeah. So we've had to do that change over back up Upgrade. to a normal, yeah, yeah. And up, it, but it's what is normal. You don't pay mm. additional, so to speak. And the only time you actually pay um, an extra amount of money on top for your bills and everything else is if you want a house that's on six kilowatt, which is yeah. a major thing, you know, yeah. where people maybe are using a lot, or it might be a commercial type situation in that case. Yeah. But most homes run on three really comfortably without any issues. Yeah. Sydney weather is playing up and we mm. just realised we were in the dark. We've just shifted a little bit because unfortunately the light outside, it's doing it again. We've got a lot of dark clouds coming over so I'm sorry if the light is dipping while we're doing this. Um, we don't have a lot of options here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hoping that um, it's light enough for you. Anyway, we'll keep on keeping on and the next question is from the lovely Willow. Now I'm not sure if Willow's real name is Willow, but um, she knows who she is. So lovely Willow asked a bit of a charged question here as well. Yeah. Um, now I will mention also, which I did mention I think to Willow in a, in a little message I sent her, there is a link to a video I made back from Sydney when we were first purchasing. Um, it yeah. is in the website on the website and I'll put the link to that particular um, vlog for you to go back and jump in and have a look because I did do a fairly major vlog about how to purchase mm. in Italy um, where we found our house about the different real estate sites and I put yeah. all their links and showed you what I did and everything so for anyone that is a little bit lost I think that's a really good one for you to go back and watch mm. but I'm more than happy to answer this question again briefly um, here especially to help Willow out as well immediately so first of all she asked did we use mm. a local real estate agent and yes we did um, so yeah. We used a lovely lady called Elisa Di Graziani and I have put Elisa's link before um, in the description of the vlogs as well. So her website is there. But uh, we actually found, um, because Willow asked also, do we find the agent or the house first? So we found the house yes. first. Yeah. Now, um, when I was sitting at home endlessly searching for homes, and I've been doing this for a long time, even prior to even knowing David. <laughs> so this has been like an <laughs> ongoing thing for years. Um, and I became a real expert researcher when it came to the, these kind of things. But when I was searching, basically I would use as many as I could, but I stuck to three major websites, again, mm. which the links will be there, but it's immobiliare.it, um, Gateway, and mm -hmm. Idealista. And if any of you have been searching for homes in Italy, you would have heard of those mm -hmm. ones. Now, what I would do is I would then write in English. I didn't write in Italian, um, even though I can. I actually wanted them to know I was a foreign buyer. Um, that way, I, f I just feel it's better, you know, that you, you just do that immediately. Yeah. So I, if I saw something that was interesting to us, I would just write a little message via the website um, that I was on and they would get back to me. And that's how we proceeded. And prior to finding this house in Kiani and contacting Elisa, mm. we had been in contact with other real estate agents in other parts of um, Italy. We actually started our search in Umbria and we also looked in Lazio, yep. um, a few different areas that I know really well. Um, and those things didn't work out, but we found Elisa via the website, but it was because of the house. So she had this listing, we were interested in this listing and that's how it worked out. Yeah. Now, fortunately for us, um, it worked out really well because Elisa is an incredible professional, highly regarded person in the area. She's also the deputy mayor of one of the local towns that I mentioned before. Mm. Um, her husband is a geometra architect. 
Um, so therefore, we felt mm. really comfortable with them from the beginning because when you are purchasing a house in Italy, whether you're going to make changes or not, you're going to need a geometra because you really want the searches, correct searches to be done on the house. And normally that's what the geometry does. They also check for any yeah. engineering problems, um, architectural problems, but also mm. anything to do with any official things that maybe, you know, if someone had done an addition on the house and it hadn't been put through council, they are going to find that out for you and they're going to let you know. So mm. those kind of things, you must never skip them. Yeah. If you hear so, someone having a problem down the track, it's usually because they haven't gone through the correct searches with a geometra and it's so important. Yeah. So by our agent's husband being one of those, it was like we hit the double whammy. We hit mm. this great package deal of having it in the family and having great local people who were highly regarded and that could help us. And it made the process so simple. Um, and as I said, all these kind of things are in that initial vlog yeah. I did as well. And the important thing about getting a geometer is um, you need them to tell you whether you can make any alterations to the property and what type of alterations are allowed. Yes. Um, not the real estate agent. Yes. So the real estate agent might go, oh yeah, you can do this and that and this and yes. that. Yes. And then, <laughs> and then you buy the property and then the geometer says, no. You can't do that. So, so you don't want to be in that situation. So you definitely get, if you've got any thoughts of, oh, we can do this or we can do that, or maybe we can do this for this, this room or that room, um, or extend here, um, definitely get the geometer to um, Absolutely. advise you what you can do and what you can't do. Absolutely. We have heard horror stories where yeah. people have not done that and have ended up purchasing properties that they couldn't do a thing to. So be yeah. aware of that go through the correct steps and stages yeah. with that. Especially um, if it's country property. Yes. Mm. And uh, the last thing she asked as well, all to do with that one question was also about um, the, did we hire a lawyer? No, we did not hire an actual lawyer. There are some English speaking mm. lawyers out there that help people with purchasing properties in Italy. But we had a notary, which was a highly mm. recommended notary by again by our agent. They can help you with that. Yeah. Um, we started yeah. with one in Florence. Mm. We did have to change to one in Luca along the way just because of different um, circumstances. But again, um, a lot of notaries in Italy because mm. they are public, actually public, public figures, servants. if you like public servants, yeah. it's an official government job. It's a special type of notary mm. um, solicitor, if you like, that a lot of other countries don't necessarily have for it's, house purchases. It's, it's part of the so process. You have to You have to have a have notary. Have but having one from the start as well, again, mm. they check on all those checks that are going through and they will not let anything go through that is not above board. That So normally... Mm. they can help that process. But as David was saying before, nevertheless, all your checks, tick all those boxes prior because that's not the notary's no. responsibility to no. do that. Okay? Right. So yeah. the next question is from Robert. And Robert has asked, do we rent a car or mm. purchase one? That's an interesting one. Um, so renting a car is, as, as you probably know, is become quite expensive, um, especially if you're renting it for, you know, if you're there for a month or two, that, and then, you know, that cost is uh, quite high. So, so it's, a, it's a difficult one. Um, we've, we've had thoughts on this, you know, on our next trip. We did rent cars in the first, the first trip, um, which uh, we managed to get a reasonable deal, so it wasn't too bad but um you know they, they do go up and down the price of renting a car but uh what i think we'll do longer term is definitely buy a car um there's a few things obviously you know in different country you have to have the uh, correct residency before you can buy officially buy a car and own a car in italy um so that's one thing you need to be aware of you can't just turn up as a holiday maker and buy a car mm. um but longer term uh, you know, I definitely would like to get a little Vespa, um, and I know Marissa wants to get a little Ape. I want an Ape Calesino. <laughs> so I've always you, wanted if you, one. If you don't know what an Ape Calesino, I'm sure Marissa can add a photo to the video. I will add a photo to this video <laughs> and show you. Because, because they're essentially uh, 
a, mes a Vespa or a, a little moped. They're made by Piaggio, yeah. which is the same company that makes, makes Vespas. Vespas yeah. yeah, and um, the Piaggio is literally, they like inside, it still has the scooter type handles in the older type ones, which is the mm. ones I love. Yeah. And they have one wheel at the front and two wheels at the back, but it's like a little cabin that two people can sit in. In fact, some of them can squeeze three, three people, people yeah. along a little bank seat but it's like a little truck at the back. So they are super cute. It's like driving a Vespa, yep. but you have the uh, convenience of the truck at the back. Yeah, yeah. And they're so, super cute. So just around the villages, fantastic yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah. Obviously, if you want to go a longer journey, then you no. might just rent, rent a car <laughs> for a day or two or whatever. Um, but just for around yeah. you know, town and um, doing your, your local things, and they're, they're great. They're yeah. awesome. Yeah, really practical. Um, and the... Second part, well, actually, Robert mm. also asked, was there an advantage to purchasing a car? Oh, I guess long, that longer term, finished, yeah. yeah. Longer term, obviously, it's, it's financial. So More yeah. than anything, yeah. Robert, I'd say it's the financial side, really, because, look, I've been looking at car rentals for us when we go back mm. to Kiani now, and I said to David, oh, gosh, they've yeah. just gone crazy. The prices are yeah. ridiculous. In fact, I looked at a one-month rental of a car, and it was literally the price of what it would cost us to buy the Ape Calicino. So yeah. there you go. And that would be our own car that we leave behind there. It would yeah. mean we would still have to get to and from airports and stuff, but we can do that. That's no, not a problem. Transfer, um, yeah, we could do it just a transfer. Yeah. And honestly, it'd still be cheaper to pay a taxi from Pisa if we had to, literally, yeah. than to pay for a whole month's rental. Yeah. Um, whereas if we had the Ape or a smaller car sitting there at home, um, that would make a big difference. Mm. So, you know, there's the the pros and cons, literally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So next question is from Janet. Mm. Hi, Janet. And Hello. Janice, Janet sorry, asked, where are the grocery stores? Which we did answer that before, but what I'm going to add here, Janet, is, so you've already been told where mm. all our major grocery stores are, but I was going to literally list here for Janet and for anyone else, um, what we have in Kiani because it doesn't look like a lot when you're there and then when you start listing them out you think gosh we actually do have a lot of things mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people um, other expat friends that live in other villages or even towns around Tuscany that we've met already um, when they come to visit us in Kiani they go oh gosh you have so much here you have mm. so much choice and so much yeah. so many restaurants and like top level as well so basically in Kiani, which is a village, mm -hmm. um, we can literally get anything we need for everyday life. Of course, we can't go out and buy a sofa bed <laughs> and we can't go and buy a car. You've got to go to major mm. centres to get things like that. But for everyday life. So I'm going to list them off for you. So literally we have within two minutes of our house, two minute walk, I walk down with my shopping basket that David yep. bought me. We have a mini market which is a really super duper little supermarket, beautiful mm. people in there and really you can get anything you need. But the village also has another mini, mini market up the top end of the village, which I've seen, mm. I've walked by, I've not gone into it, but it's like a little, little mini general store. Yep. Also, apart from that, and in supermarkets in Italy, if you're not already aware, you can also buy alcohol and you can also buy bread, fresh bread that comes from a baker. So in the mini markets, you can go in and buy, you know, whatever you need to eat, your things for your house. You can buy yourself a bottle of wine. You can get some fresh bread. Um, yeah. You can get, you know, fresh cheeses and meats and frozen foods and all, all the rest of it. Then we have on Saturdays, every Saturday, we have a veggie market, which is just a very simple little person that comes into the village, puts themselves, sets themselves up, mm. husband and wife team, I think, um, on the little square that's next to our post office. Mm -hmm. And they sell a big range of fresh fruit and vegetables. Yeah. They even have quite exotic things, like when it's in season, mangoes and different things that you might not get normally speaking in a little village. Um, also, we have two fantastic bakeries now the mm -hmm. main old bakery um which is literally around the corner from um, from us that's where i tend to go and get my fresh bread because that bakery makes the most fantastic mm. rye bread which i love i like a darker bread and david loves that oh, particular one they make it's a beautiful yeah, bread yeah. Mm. but she is also a little general store so when i'm there getting my bread i often pick up 
some bits and pieces, whatever I might need, some extra yogurt, some milk, some different things. And they have soya milk and plant-based milk and, and pastas yeah. and fruit and veggies and yeah. whatever you need. Again, they have it there. Um, we have another fantastic organic baker who's only opened a couple of days a week, but they make grow their own grain, organic grain, make their own breads, make their own pastas that they sell. Mm. Sensational. Then we have, um, on top of that, we have a... A hardware store just around the corner from us where I've been picking up all the different little bits and bobs that I need that I've forgotten from bigger stores or even if I need an extra nail or an extra hook for something I pop down there and it's a really mm -hmm. lovely old-fashioned one where you, the lady climbs off a ladder and finds the stuff for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we have beauty parlors, we have hairdressing salons, we have uh, giftware shops or gift mm -hmm. shops I should say sorry that sell yeah. lovely little homewares and souvenirs and things Things. we have a florist shop mm. we have excellent cafes pizzerias restaurants of all levels right up to a five star on TripAdvisor we have takeaway sort of fast mm. food but Italian style Star, which is yeah. awesome like <laughs> fresh pastas um, you might have seen the video yeah. where David and I picked up a frittura which is like takeaway almost like mm. a fish and chips without the chips <laughs> where she yeah. does all mixed um, fried seafoods Sea food. on a Friday yeah, night yeah. Mm. Um, so I'm just trying to picture what else we have around there um, gosh oh we have a um, a paper shop you know to pick up your magazines and they sell gifts and clothes we have a little clothing wear store as well and you pay your bills in there mm. like a lot of the shops do a few things so yeah. um langolo di serena a lovely friend of ours so she has like clothing and other things for the store i picked up some beautiful linen pure linen tea mm. towels locally made tea towels from her but also if you need to pay a utilities bill you can pay it there and also a bit like a post office that we do that here in a post office in australia you can do that there with her yeah. and you can buy lottery tickets and things we of course have a post office and that's right next mm. to the Comune, which is like the Shire Council. So if you've got yeah. council issues or you need to talk to a councillor about something or something to do with, you know, rubbish issues or whatever, it's all mm. there. So we literally, oh, and we have a, a, a petrol station and we have a charging station for electronic cars. Yep. Um, gosh. What else? <sighs> So many things, honestly, mm. um, really, really well-serviced mm. little village. And there are even offices, like, for example, for our real estate agent has an office there. There's the architect's office there. I've mm. seen an office for an accountant there. I've seen an office for um, a few other services anyway. So yeah. pretty much Thanks. excellent. Oh, of course, we have an excellent bank. bank, which we have an account there, and we have an ATM. Yep. So anyone that is traveling that needs cash out, there's an ATM right outside mm -hmm. the bank. So that's wonderful. We have a fantastic tourist office as well, and yes. they organize little... Which is right outside the bank. Right outside the bank. <laughs> um, and these are literally all mm. within two minutes walk of our house. We walk out our front door and we're there. Everything is just all around yeah. us. So it's just wonderful. Not forgetting the bar. Of course. Oh no, I did mention cafes and bars. Yes, yes. the bar is the hub, oh. the hub, the heart of the village. <laughs> <laughs> Another little question here. Mm. Uh, this is from Growing Growing Up Rosie as well. Mm. Uh, yes. yes. Oh, so no, sorry. Yeah. This is the first question from Growing Up Rosie. Sorry. So Rosie was asking a lot about really practical things like hospitals mm -hmm. and doctors and dentists yes. and things like that. So we know that there is a major hospital of course in pisa and in florence so they are major major centers obviously but there is also a hospital in pontedera which i mentioned mm -hmm. before where our bus runs to our next door neighbor actually has just resigned or sorry just retired i should say from working at the hospital there mm -hmm. in the pediatric center um and there is also a smaller hospital in volterra which isn't very far from us so we are well serviced with major hospitals. Also, just in back in a place I mentioned before for the shopping center, La Rosa. Mm -hmm. Now La Rosa has what they call an emergency center, which um, another neighbor also works at. Mm -hmm. um, and that is an emergency center, just like you would go if you'd had an accident or your child falls over and cuts themselves and you would take them to you know, the emergency department of a hospital. Yep. That is basically the same thing. But they also do do all children's vac vaccinations and other different kinds of vaccinations. And they do general things. So that's excellent. Mm. 
Within Kiani itself, we have our own medical center. So we are set up with our own doctors in the village. We also have two excellent dentists. Now, this is not by experience, but it's via experience of expat friends of ours who did have to do dentistry while they were on holidays in Kiani and they were blown away by the quality of the dentistry mm -hmm. and also by the price, which was extraordinarily cheap in comparison to anywhere else in the world, including here in Australia, including anywhere else, you know what dentistry can be like. They were blown away. Mm -hmm. So excellent doctors and dentists, and also, on top of everything else, because Kiani is um, a comune, in other words, we like, like a little shire and we're the head village of our shire of Kiani, we also have a Misericordia, which mm. is an ambulance centre right in the heart of the village again, just near the, the shire building, the council building, I should say. And literally, there are people there 24-7. Yep. So, unlike a big city like where we are at the moment in Sydney, where you could ring an ambulance for an emergency and perhaps wait minutes, a long time, too mm. long, in fact, mm. if it's a major emergency. Mm. In Kiani, my next door neighbour who is a nurse said to me, Marisa, if ever anything happens, you ring that phone, you get the ambulance straight to your house, they're there in under two minutes. To me, that mm. is awesome. To know mm. we're in a little village in Tuscany and we have those kind of services, so it's very reassuring. I'm sure you'll be happy to hear that growing up Rosie, that's for sure. Mm. Oh, I just noticed growing up Rosie, there was another part to your question, which was about um, shops, restaurants, train lines, post office. I think I've mentioned all those things already. So post office, as Sassabi said, is literally a two minute walk from where we are. It's right on a major little square in the center of mm -hmm. Kiani, yep. right next to the council building. Um, I've mentioned all the shops and restaurants, etc. Amazing restaurants just mm. to die for. And train lines, you asked about that, which I've answered that question earlier on as well. Um, just so you know, nearest villages to us We've mentioned some of those, but ones with actual big facilities, if you like, like when I say facilities, I mean being able to shop and eat and do all those kind of things and maybe go to a post office and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have lots of villages very close to us, tiny little villages that might have a little cafe if they're lucky mm -hmm. or something like that. But within 10 to 15 minutes, say, you know, a radius of 10 to 15 minutes sort of from Kiani, yep. um, major villages that have a lot of great things to offer our Laiatico, which you would have seen in one of my videos from about two weeks ago. We, sh we went for a walk around Laiatico with yeah. where Andrea Bocelli comes from and that's an awesome village with lots going on there. Um, La Rosa we mentioned has everything. Yeah. Tericciola is another tiny village very close to us where we mm. visited um, just in the last mm -hmm. video yeah. we showed you the sunsets at uh, Tericciola from the, the vineyards. Tericciola is the center yeah. of the wine road. Mm -hmm. um, now they have some little cafes, restaurants, a council building. Um, I noticed a barber there, a chemist. Oh, I forgot to mention we have a farmacia. We have a, mm, pharma a wonderful a pharmacy. pharmacy in pharmacy. Chiani, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, so things like that. And of course you have Cashana Terme where I mentioned my real estate mm. agent um, has her other office. Um, that is the spa town and that is a more major town as well with all the facilities you would want as yeah. well. So I hope that's answered all your questions there for that. Okay, and the final questions come from mm. our lovely friend Brenda, who's been following us from day one, I think, really, <laughs> which is awesome. So Brenda uh, wanted to know about were we going to be running a house as a B&B? &B? Now, just to make it um, clear, my idea, because I'm a bit older, mm. my idea of being beer is what I used to run in France. For, for 10 years, I owned a, a big old, like a manor house in France, and I ran a traditional, what I would call a and b where I'd got up, I would get up every morning, cook breakfasts, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. So to me, that is a b and yeah. Um, different to the whole Air thing, Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. So what our intention is and what we've already started to advertise, I, I have a link to my little Instagram here in the website of um, our YouTube website here for our house. And we named our house Viva Sonny. It was a name mm -hmm. I came up with, which David loved as well, yeah. because from day dot, this has all been about living our dreams. 
and yeah. viva sogni um, is two Italian words put together. Viva means long live, to live or long live, and sogni, sogni. is the word for dreams. Mm. So it's long live your dreams, in other words. Mm -hmm. So to me, and well, to us, that yes. was like so significant. So we thought it's a beautiful mm -hmm. name for a house. And also because it means that often it's someone's dream to even just go and stay in a house in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. So you're also living your dream when you stay yeah. at Viva Sogni. So we will and we are now renting the house. It hasn't been rented as yet, only because we're in the heart of winter now in, in Italy mm. um, and yeah. the house is probably not set up enough for those winter months yet. There are things we want to really make sure that we are really well heated and all those kind of things to be able to receive people during those colder months. And when we were um, there before rushing back to Australia, we didn't have the time to actually make sure that everything <clears throat> was functioning at a higher level as far as we have wonderful central heating, but we didn't have time to make sure it was all highly functional and it's just a few other things so viva sonia will be available from basically let's say spring onwards in other yeah. words late march early april um as the weather starts to change yep. and mm -hmm. we know people will be fine in the house without having to have major heating going then it will be available for rental um but it is not going to be registered on an Airbnb so you can come to us either via the website here I've put mm. our special email address in the description of our YouTube um, that we're using wholly and solely for that or you can contact me via the Instagram Viva Sonia, um, Instagram, Instagram yeah. which the link is also always in our descriptions um, if you're interested of course in that and um, please be aware that um, and I'm sure you're seeing that as you go along that of course, when we left Kiani, we left Kiani in a state that is beautiful. It's very comfortable now, very livable, mm -hmm. but it is still a work in progress. And we're really yes. upfront about that. Um, David and I, in all honesty, we have to do this in stages. Um, we couldn't rush in, number one, because of time, but number two, because of financial reasons. Mm -hmm. We just can't do everything all at once. It is a project for us. And it's a three level house. Um, or three and a half, because <laughs> it's kind of piggledy, <laughs> piggledy. Yeah. Um, and the ground floor, which is our big cantina, mm. uh, which is a lovely room, that is a future project where we would love that to be a separate, it has its own entrance. So later on, that might very well be something separate that we rent out separately or use for friends and family. We don't mm. honestly know. Mm. This is all as we go along. It's a bit of a learning process as well. Mm. And it has a lot to do with the time it takes how we can afford to do things. Um, we would love to do the facade of the house, as I've said in the past, and bring it back to the um, the beautiful stones underneath, whereas it has an old stucco on it. Um, we want to put in a summer kitchen downstairs um, on that ground floor and just do lots of lovely things. We want to mm. fix our kitchen in the main part of the house, which is absolutely fine the way it is and you would have seen Hopefully in the last the in yeah. the last videos you yeah. know it's got lovely lights now and all the new appliances and things and it's absolutely totally functioning and we mm. love it it's really sweet but it's not totally complete in our taste if you like later on we'd love to make some changes um, we're even thinking of making some architectural changes, changes like yeah. a lovely archway that goes through to a new little sink area with a marble sink. And, mm. you know, I've got these lovely um, dream boards I'm creating, vision boards about what we would love to do. But it's probably, again, a two year two, project, yeah. two to three year project. So but you can definitely stay and I'm sure you'll be really comfortable and happy. Everyone that walks in the house now, when they visit us, they say, wow, what a difference it's made, what you've done. Mm. And of course you haven't all seen everything that we're doing yet. We're showing you as we can. Yeah. So it's really coming along. So that answers that I hope, Brenda, mm -hmm. and we would love to see you there, Brenda <laughs> in Tuscany one day. Brenda's just an awesome lady. So lovely with us. Um, second part of your question, Brenda, because I got carried away was, oh, Ooh. this is a fun one. Do Ooh. we have a favorite recipe? Um, well, we recipe. both have come across mm. some new favorites since we've been in Tuscany. Um, well, I've always loved yeah. truffles, but we didn't realize we were living in a really hot truffle zone. 
so everything is smothered in truffles when it's truffle season. It's and we're truffle both season. And we landed love. in truffle season last we, time. We were there in truffle. So mm. we just ate so much truffle on stuff. It was to die for. But David's favourite thing is? I would say, I wouldn't say, I'd, we'll have to get the recipe, obviously. Well, we don't have the recipe. No, we just eat it the out. Dish, <laughs> uh, the, the dish was the uh, chingali ragu. Mm. Que bueno. <laughs> yeah, que bueno indeed, que bueno indeed. <laughs> so, just so, for those of you who don't know what chingali is, um, we are in a wild boar zone, and I may have spoken to mm. you about the festivals, one of our biggest festivals at the beginning of November mm -hmm. is the big wild boar festival, and it's the largest one in the whole of Tuscany, and a lot yeah. of people come to it, big, big festival. Mm. And yes, so when you go to restaurants, you'll often find a ragu or a sauce made with wild boar, and it's particularly delicious. Mm. Um, yeah, it was, yeah. David had that quite a few times, I noticed, when we ate at a different places, he tried out a, a few different <laughs> versions. I have never cooked wild boar. I also lived in a wild boar area of France um, for mm -hmm. 10 years, have eaten it, but have never cooked with it. Um, so yes, that's something to learn. I would nice. say my favorite recipe, Brenda, or for anybody else out there, um, because I tend to go a little bit more, I do eat everything, but I love to make things with veggies. Um, I love porcini mushrooms. I've always loved porcini mushrooms. And mm. also where I lived in France was a big, um, area for that, which they're called SEP in France. And if you know porcini mushrooms, they're very expensive to purchase, but they grow wild crazy in the forests around Chiani yep. and around our area. And therefore, it's a big deal. And of course, we were there during that season as mm. well. So everywhere you go, um, you have beautiful dishes with mm. porcini mushroom. And we have so roasted we porcini. Video. We did mm -hmm. the last video. Yeah, you yeah. saw us. We went to that little nonna, the nonna's little restaurant house thing, where yeah. we had amazing um, porcini mushroom papadelli, I think it was. Yes. And then they mm -hmm. roasted them in the oven for us with potatoes. It was to die for. Mm -hmm. um, probably my favorite recipe to make myself. And when I get back into my kitchen in Chiani, I promise you I will try and make it. Um, is a porcini mushroom risotto. And mm. I've been making that for years and I love it. Not only is it totally delicious, but it's lots of fun to make. Oh, yes. So that's probably, mm. and I think David really loves it as well. He likes eating my porcini mushroom risotto. Never says no. <laughs> so that's probably my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> we were just about to finish up and then mm. I saw one last lovely question here from Monica. And um, Monica is an Australian Italian like me. Mm. So thank you, Monica, for joining us. I haven't seen you here before. So thanks so much for being here with us. And I'm lucky that I saw this just before we finished up um, the video. So Monica was mm. asking about, um, oh gosh, she was inspired by us buying a house unseen. Thank you so much. And yes, I, I, look, I think we're we feel pretty blessed that it's all gone as well as it has, yep. that's for sure. We're just over the moon. Um, she would like to perhaps live half the year in Italy, but can't imagine choosing and just going with it like we have. She imagines being stuck in analysis paralysis. I love it. <laughs> what a way to explain that, Monica. That's awesome. And so she wants to know what inspired us and how mm. we have managed so quickly to build a lovely life there with friends, contacts, manage renovations and purchases, etc. Okay, loaded question, Monica. So well, it basically wasn't, it wasn't quick. No, it wasn't it wasn't quick. It does take a lot it of was, planning, Monica. So there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And the search. Yeah. Was and, 18 and the, months, oh really? yes. And we started yeah. looking Yeah, absolutely. Long search. Yeah. But look, as far as number one as far as making friends and things like that in the village, I think we hit that before earlier on in another question. Um, I've lived mm. in small villages in Europe before. Um, I have, I think, mentioned before that I lived in uh, France for 10 years and had a bed and breakfast there and also a farmhouse there just outside of the same village and have wonderful friendships that have lasted to this day. And I'm talking about quite a long time ago. But I've lived in a lot of different places and I don't think it matters mm. where in the world you go to. I think a lot of it's just down to you. I think yeah. really, if you just go with an open heart and an open mind and you embrace where you mm. are, um, 
obviously you already have a love for Italy like we do, like I did mm. and like David does. And I was just so lucky to find a man that had the same passion mm. as me, even though an Englishman, but had always loved Italy. So when you go with that mindset, um, already so happy to be there, already so willing to join mm. in the community, um, your friends, they'll just come to you. The right people will come to you. Um, we've just found people have embraced us and we, yeah. it, we embrace them back. And I think no matter where you live in the world, and when I went to live in France, I did not speak fluent French when I arrived. I mean, I luckily speak Italian, but when I got there, I had to learn the language. I had schoolgirl French, but and I was running a business literally from day dot. Um, so it was a hard slog, but yeah. I was determined to make it work, and I was determined that so I the, was going to. The example that comes yeah. to mind is is the the old lady that never said hello every time you walk past. Yes. Her. Oh, so yes, that's a nice that's, story, that's David. That's the perfect perfect one where oh. Marissa would walk down the street, and then there'd be this little old lady, little old nonna. She'd be walking up the other way, and you say, "Oh, buongiorno, oh, Marissa," you know, and she just look at you, give you a look and carry she on walking. She growled at me. It was a bit like <laughs> Under the Tuscan Sun, the old man in Under the Tuscan yeah, yeah. Sun. Yeah. So this would go on, you know, for several weeks, I oh, guess, yes. several weeks. Well, <laughs> but you, you had left to come yeah, home yeah, yeah, I'd prior to, come to me, out. yeah. But when um, yeah, we, had, we went to the uh, hardware shop, you know, to get the bits and bobs to put up frames and all the rest of it that we needed, and that, and that, that old lady, you know, was friends with this other old lady, you see. Uh, and, you know, as we kept going in there and chatting and talking and then Marissa carried on going in there, you know, that, that sort of old lady obviously went, oh, this is a nice lady, yeah, yeah, she's nice. And she obviously passed this on in her chats because we used to see them sitting around at the bar, you know, having their afternoon, you know, coffee or whatever. Uh, and so that obviously transferred, you know, and they said, oh, this lady's nice, you know, and then they say hello, at the, hello at the bar and then one day, you know, She's walking up the road, Marissa's walking down, expecting the same response, but the old lady's going, Hello! Ciao! <laughs> like so, you so, 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 you know, initially, you know, you're thinking, oh, you know. It no. takes time. Yeah, it just it takes just time. It just takes sometimes. time. And not everybody is going to be from day dot. And look, you can mm. imagine in smaller villages and towns, you're the newcomer. And I've always, again, as I said, it's a bit that mindset that mm. I'm the new person. It's up to me to make that that yeah. you know first move. Oh, to sorry, push. your phone just made a noise. It's 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 up to us to make those efforts as well, and exactly. and show to the people that yes, we're here for the right reasons, and and we're good yeah. people, <laughs> and we want the same things you as you. Part of the happy. community, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that helps. Um, look, as far as choosing to do what we did, I know it's not for everyone. You know, yeah. I know not everyone can make yeah. th that choice and and take that leap of yeah. faith. Yeah. Um, in all honesty, I thought about this question when I read it before, and one thing I will mention, which I didn't even get to talk to David about, but um, something that is really, this is very, touching on something very personal, is that because I was doing the major part of this search when the pandemic hit, mm. um, that was a big catalyst to me to yeah, make this yeah, yeah. happen. I decided then and there, and we talked about it a lot, was that I now, with seeing what's happening in the world, more than ever was mm. determined to actually take the risk and to actually just live our mm. lives, live our best lives, just throw caution to the wind in some ways. Mm. We were still very, as I said, you know, did the right legal things, went through the right channels, don't do anything ridiculously, but... As far as the actual risk taking or mm. being a little bit yeah. daring to just up and move like that or buy something without being there. It's, it sounds, on one, on one side of the thing, because you haven't gone there yourself and visually looked to the house, it sounds really risky. But, you know, with the modern age, you know, we've, we had the real estate agent, she walked around and filmed every room, mm. spoke about this is where this is, this is, and then she went around corners, and went up, <laughs> up there and looked down there. She was very precise, so, yeah. You know, you can almost, you know... It's like being there. It's like being there. So, mm. so it wasn't as risky, so you can offset those risks by, you know, getting the real estate agent to do a film. 
uh, for you and, and go into every nook and cranny and look inside cupboards and things, you know, just yes. so you can tell them what you're looking for. Absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, about getting the geometer to, you know, obviously do the building inspection and you get all that side of things um, sorted out. And then the real estate open helps you with the notary. So all of that, you know, sort of um, takes away that risk. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me just make sure we've answered everything for... I think that's about mm. as best as we can for now, Monica, in all honesty. But I'm, what I would highly recommend is that if you haven't seen the other video I mentioned before, um, which I will put the link to that video in this one as well in the description for people that haven't seen my previous video about buying a home in Italy, um, I will link yeah. that up so you can maybe jump back and watch that. I think that could be really useful for yeah. you. Yeah. And one last tiny little thing is, I can't remember if I mentioned this before, I don't think so, David, um, is that now I'm actually helping my real estate agent. Um, we have become really good friends and I'm now helping her with her Anglo or non-Italian speaking customers or clients. Mm. So that means that now if you need help um, to purchase in our area. She actually has homes all over Tuscany, um, but obviously specializes more in our general area mm. um, that I can help you. So if you would feel more comfortable, if you feel like you're getting to know me a little bit via these and you feel more comfortable asking me a question, please, please feel mm. free to contact me um, either via here, via one of my social media platforms or on the email address, via the email address that we have in the description. And I will try to help you as best as I can. Um, I'm just helping her out now with that. Um, so there's no charge or anything like that to you at all. It's just something that I'm mm. happy to do because I can see there's a real need for it and that people mm. often feel obviously more comfortable being able to speak to someone that's been through the process recently and is another expat like them. Mm. So please feel free to contact me for that as well. Well, I think we've done our dash. That's this could be a bit of a long one today, but yeah. we really just wanted to get all of those questions out of the way. Hope we the hope the answers have been useful. Yes, I mm. think so. I really hope so. Yeah. And look, you know, along as we go along, we can do another one of these down the track. Um, mm. If you think of anything else that specifically you would like to know, please always just ask the questions in the comments under the videos, and mm. we're more than happy to get back to you. Or we can do another specific video at some yeah. stage. But in the meantime, thank you so much for your. Um, as I said, for all of your support and your encouragement and mm. for following us, we are so yes, grateful. Thank you. And we'll see you. So the next video after this one is going to be a little bit different. We are leaving Keani just for a short period of time because David took me somewhere very special. And well, yeah. you will see. Mm. It's an exciting episode. I think you're going to like it. <laughs> we sure did. <laughs> right. it's, like, it's like Star Wars, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not like Star Wars, I assure you. <laughs> Episode four, Star Wars. <laughs> oh, you're nuts. <laughs> okay, mm. we'll see you next time, everyone. Until then, um, sending lots of bachi and mm. thank you so much for viewing. And please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Push the like mm. button. Mm. Send us, put us a little comment or a question. Um, we really appreciate that so much. It helps the channel to grow. It helps us to get out to more people. And we're just so grateful for that. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao. 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 See you.